But I cannot bear that we should part like this. Let us do one simple good thing before we go to bed tonight. An earnest of all we mean to do. Let me think. One little thing. Ah, there's my neighbour, Colonel Wynne Stanley, chairman of the bench, full of influence, and all that influence against progress. He's always treated me with the utmost civility. I bear him no malice. He sits late at night and drinks. Drinks, I fear, far too much. I'm no pedant in these matters, but he... he boozes. He will be sitting there now, a decanter by his side. Change it to some simple, non-intoxicating fluid. And his house is all decorated with swords and weapons. Beat them into plowshares. Turn his swords into reaping hooks. Well, but will he like it? I rang six times. You go to bed too early, Moody. And now tell me, what the devil's the matter with this whiskey? It's gone wrong. It's lost its taste. It's flat. It's worse than flat. It's mawkish. It's the real old stuff, sir, out of the old jar. It's not the real old stuff, and it's not out of the old jar. What have you been doing to it, Moody? I can assure you, sir. You can assure me I'm drinking whiskey when I know I'm not. What's going on? That's more like in water instead of whiskey that the house falls down. Don't go and see, man, go and see. Don't stand staring there. Something's yes. happened there. Poison. Poison. Moody, why don't you come and tell me? Well, I, I don't understand it, sir. When I stepped through the hall about three minutes ago, everything was as right as could be, and now it's... it's frightful, sir. What's frightful? What do you mean, frightful? What, what are you talking about? It's gone, sir. Gone? It's all the... all the swords are gone, sir. The whole collection. And there's a lot of other things look like... Agricultural implements to me, sir, mostly on the floor. Such as this, for example. What is this... blinking... Bolshevik thing? What is it? What, what, what's it mean? What the... <coughs> the house going mad? Oh, Lord. If I could lay my hands on a fool, what stop this? Oh, the look, police in you, Hinton! Stole my swords! Oh, I understand that. What do you mean by leaving this list? Fuck! Beats me! <laughs> Who's that ringing at this time of the night? I can't imagine. Don't imagine, don't imagine. Go and see, man. Yes, sir. Anyone's mm. playing any sort of game with me? Inspector Smithles. You come in, come in, confound you, come in and see what's happened to my weapons. Well? It's some more of it, sir. More of what? There's been a serious outbreak of miracles in the district, sir. Quite beyond anyone's experience. Miracles? Yes, sir, miracles. Well, aren't such things. Not properly, sir, which makes it so disconcerting, sir. We didn't come here disturbing you this time at night about nothing. But seeing as you're the chairman of the bench, we thought you might be able to help. Well, what is it? What is it? It's about this Constable Winch of ours, what's been missing since last night. We've searched everywhere. We've dragged the mill stream. We've made inquiries up and down the railway line. Well, you don't expect me to find him for you, do you, at ten minutes to midnight? No, sir, but I've got a cable. What's sort of a cable? A telegram, sir, from San Francisco. San Francisco? Please do Hendon. This Constable Winch? Missing, stop. Appeared mysteriously here. Stop. Slightly injured in street riot, provoked by himself. It's some sort of a hoax. With all due respect, sir, it isn't a hoax. It's something more serious. It's that young fellow, Fotheringay. Fotheringay? Moody! I must have a whiskey. If I don't have a whiskey, my mind will give way. Yes, sir, but... 
Good Lord. Is that another miracle? I'll get another jar, sir. I'll get one with the seal unbroken. And water. It's nastier than that, sir. <laughs> I should say it's one of these temperance drinks. <coughs> well, Moody, anything to say? Oh, sir, I got my weaknesses, but I'd as soon poison a baby as tamper with whiskey. If you ask me, it's fathering gay again, sir. Fathering gay, more fathering gay. <laughs> I'll keep calm. I went to myself and everybody to keep calm. Oh. Perfectly calm. I'll see this fellow tomorrow. No fuss. I'll talk to him quietly, calmly. No good getting heated. I'll have it out with him. Oh, bring him to me, Smithles. Sort of casually. Just for a bit of advice. In my garden. Don't alarm him. And keep an eye on him when you're bringing him. Keep your truncheon up your sleeve. If he raises a finger, if he so much as looks like San Francisco, Club him. I'll see you through. <laughs> ah, so that's the little miracle worker. Don't look like it, little cad. Spoiled my whiskey, ruined my collection. Calmly, calmly. <clears throat> well, Mr. Superintendent, so this is the young man they wanted me to see, is it? This is Mr. Fotheringay, sir, as directed. At your service, sir. I want to talk with you. I want a serious talk with you. Chairman of the bench and deputy lieutenant, the former owner of a valuable collection of weapons, and the proprietor of a once powerful cellar, as a fellow citizen of the unfortunate Constable Winch, I want, naturally and properly, a talk with you. I want, if I may say so, an explanation. Well, how I wish to know. Why, it's almost as hard. See, I just seem able to do things. Yes, and nice, friendly things you do, eh? Well, it's hard to know what to do without offending people. Offending people? Well, how the devil else do you expect me to take that trick with my whiskey and my collection? Oh, Mr. Maydig. Maydig? Uh, yes. What, that new preacher chap? What's he got to do with it? Well, he was, he was advising me. Advising you? Yeah. He, he said, if for once you should go to bed sober... Would you mind saying that again? Yes, if you wasn't to drink too much. Go on, sir, go on. I can bear it. I want to hear you out. Then we might uh, make it a sort of a symbolical action of change, uh, changing your weapons, see? That would sort of prepare your mind for the peace of the world. And when might that bid you? Oh, very soon now. Uh, peace and plenty. Mr. Maidig made it very plain how we were to set about it. You're going to set about it? When? I'm seeing Mr. Maidig at 12, and I suppose we'll start the golden age somewhere in the afternoon. I suppose they'll start the golden age somewhere in the afternoon. They suppose they'll start the golden age somewhere in the afternoon. Under the circumstances, I hardly like to mention my collection and my whiskey. Oh, don't mention it. 
We didn't mean to annoy. I'll, I'll make it all right now. Is that all you do? Just that? That's all. The miracle's done and my whiskey's whiskey and the collection back again? Yes, you can go and see it if you like. The extraordinary thing is I can do these things. Why, well, I, could, I could turn this garden into a, into a palm tree forest and fill it with tigers. There's no limit to what I can do. There's no limit to what you can do. You. Me. It just seems comes out of me. You can do practically anything. You want me to do anything now? But a fellow of your sort. Well, why not a fellow of my sort? Do you want me to do a miracle for you? Something big? Well, perhaps it's just as well to know what we're up against. All right. How'd you like to see India again, eh? Um, some place in India. Bombay. Let's both be in Bombay now. Oh. Colonel, are you satisfied we're in Bombay? It's changed a bit. I recognize it. Yes, I admit, we're in Bombay. How the devil we're going to get back, heaven knows. I had to talk to some men after lunch. That's all right, you shall. Let's both be back in the Colonel's garden at Dewinton now. Well, is it all right? Can I work miracles or can't I? No doubt of it. Talk about abolishing distances. There you are, you see? What did I tell you? Yes, I see. Now, Mr. Medley, he has ideas, he has imagination. There's no sense in going on with business and banking and all that, seeing these gifts that have come to me, because that's what Mr. Medley calls a want system, and we're going to live in a plenty system. There's no need for people to be hard up anymore, no need for people to be sick and ill and hungry, no need for robbing and cheating, and no need for war. No need for anything, as far as I can see. It will be different, but Mr. Medley says you can't work miracles and stay as you are. But if you put an end to war, sir, as I gather you intend to do before tea time today, and as I'm beginning to believe you can, if you put an end to competition, make work unnecessary, give people more money than they know what to do with, then I ask you, what are people going to do, sir? What are they going to do? Well, I'm a, I'm a bit puzzled about that myself. But uh, Mr. Maidig says we just ought to go about loving one another. Go about loving one another. Go about loving one another, you. Are you mad, sir? Are you human? Have you no sense of decency? The most private, the most sacred feelings. Mr. Maidig seemed to feel so differently about it all. Of course, there's, there is art and science and making things. Fret work and... Fret work and foolery. Well, we can give it a trial, I suppose. There's no telling what human beings will do. Mr. Maidig says... Mr. Maidig says, Mr. Maidig says that you're going to start this bedlam millennium of yours within six hours. What's going to happen to us? What's going to become of us all? I don't really know exactly that myself. It'll be a bit of a change. But Mr. Maidig... Oh! Says... Mr. Mr. Fotheringay, won't you give all this business a few hours, a few days consideration before you let it rip? I mean, after all, we've got, we've got a sort of order here, kind of civilization. We've got the empire. Yes, but, see, that's all very well for people like you. But most of the people are well are people like me. Now, it's perfectly natural for people like you to want to keep things as they are. I'm all for letting them loose, see? I don't mind change. I think... Change might be a lot. But haven't we had enough change the last hundred years? Railways, electricity, radio. <laughs> it shook us up a bit, but it hasn't hurt us, it hasn't killed us. <laughs> now I'm all for more and better change. 